Oftentimes, the best solution is the one that works. And in this case, the solution that works is built right into the standard assets. So as you can see, there are now two cars on the track. We've got the lap timer in place, the countdown timer. We have an automatic system for letting us know that the race has actually started. So we can use all those things in conjunction with the built-in AI features for car racing that come with the standard assets. And we can have a fully functioning race almost ready to go. This is a car waypoint based prefab. It's different than the regular car and this is an AI car that I made. I simply copied the car waypoint based prefab and I made one called AI car and I changed the body material to a green material. That's all I did. That's the only difference there. So what we can do is drag the car waypoint based up into the level. You can see this is the same uh, car here, this waypoint based car. Again, I just changed the material to pink. I just felt like that would be kind of cute. It comes with all of the scripts already attached to it that it needs to be an AI car. It's got the car controller, the car AI controller, the waypoint progress tracker, the audio, and I've added a flow machine to it. So inside this flow machine, I've said on the fixed update, whether or not the race is active, we are going to enable or disable the car AI. So we're taking the race active variable, which is a scene variable, but we can get it right from here. And we're going to drag that to a branch. And if that's true, then we're going to enable the AI. If it's not true, in other words, if the race isn't happening, we're going to disable the car AI. This will keep the car from driving off before the race actually starts based on this race active variable. The second part about this AI component are the waypoints. These are simply cubes that I put along the track. You can see that it gives us this uh, yellow line. These are the waypoints that the AR car wants to follow. These are just cubes. I dragged them out into the scene and I put them in this waypoints folder. And then to get there, you just add this waypoint circuit script. You can find this script in the Unity standard assets. It's actually in the utility folder. So there is no script folder in the utility folder. You just find the utility and then you find this waypoint circuit script. And then you can attach that. So you can call this object, this is just an empty game object, and call it anything. Drag the waypoint script up to it and then you hit, once you have all your cubes in there, you assign using all child objects. You just click this button. It is very, very easy to do. And then from here, what I can do is actually change the uh, orientation direction that I want the car to go. So you can see this turn right here is a little funny. So I could actually grab this cube and maybe move it around and make this a rounder corner if I wanted to. Now, I left these meshes active. You, oops, you can actually see them in the game. So I'll do a race and I'll show you what I mean by that. But I, I left them active so, so I could see as I'm following the AI car how close it is to the track. Now there's a few settings built into this. So if we go to the waypoint based car, the car AI controller script actually had it open. It's got a cautious speed factor. And what this does is it basically says, okay, if I'm approaching a corner, I'm going to slow down a little bit. Um, and it's got this cautious max angle, which has, um, you know what? We don't even have to wonder what this stuff is. We can actually just read it. Um, so if we open up the script, it will actually just tell you uh, what it's doing. So this is the percentage of max speed to use when being maximally cautious. So that's what this float's actually going to do. It's a percentage of their max speed that it's going to go to. So if you're like me and you have the speed of the car set in the car controller to be really high. Uh, so I have the top speed set to be 260. It's going to take this float and divide that by whatever this percentage is. So it's going to take 0.4 of 260. Now at, at this setting, the car can't actually go 260 miles an hour. So that's a bit of a, a programming issue I've got to fix on my end. We've got the cautious max angle. It's the angle of the approaching corner to treat as warranting maximum caution. So this is a setting where depending on how, how well laid out I have the track, you can approach turns, uh, I, this should be much lower. So maybe just over 90. So you, anything that's above 95 will be maximally cautious. I believe that's how this is written. This should be kind of low. Um, so this will keep the car from going too fast around corners effectively. Cautious max distance. What does that one say? It's the distance at which distance-based cautiousness begins. So this is how far away from the corner they start to slow down. Cautious angular velocity is how cautious the AI should be when considering its own current angular velocity. So it's going to ease off acceleration if it's spinning. I left these next few at, at uh, their defaults. 
Um, so steering sensitivity I left alone, Excel sensitivity I left alone. So this is the, how sensitive the AI uses the accelerator to reach the current desired speed, the sensitivity the AI uses to reach the current braking speed. So these all kind of make a lot more sense uh, as the variables are, are named. Lateral wander speed and lateral wander distance, those are kind of built-in errors in the driving. So the how far the car will wander laterally towards its target. So this is the wander distance of three. Now this is what I'm going to use to set degrees of difficulty. I'm going to make it very easy for the AI to get off track on the easy difficulty. And I'm going to modify these settings here to make it stay on track for most of the race on normal and, and hard modes. And then what I'm going to do is um, set those dynamically using Volt. Uh, I haven't done that yet because I just wanted to get the AI in place. So I'm happy with how it works now. There's a few more functions I need to build out before I get to that point. This waypoints target object, that's going to find the waypoints that are built into this waypoints game object over here. And so where we want to set that is in this waypoints progress tracker right in the circuit. So the circuit is what, where the object goes that has our waypoints. Um, and then it finds them automatically. Uh, you can also modify the look ahead for targets, the target offset, the speed offset. This is where you can also control how closely the car is going to stick to that track. What I also have to consider is making the tracks. So if I make the tracks really difficult, that would change the amount of waypoints I have. Now, I could very well add this script to my road architect system, and I could use road one spline. I might be able to use these nodes as the waypoint system, but I don't want to mess with Road Architect too much because it works so well. And I feel like just having another object for waypoints isn't that big of a deal. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to go through and select all of the cubes I have. Uh, you can call them whatever you want if you want to call them waypoint, but it's easier to command D all the way down. I'm just going to turn off all the mesh renderers. So that way, obviously they don't, don't exist in the game, but I do want to leave this on for now so I can see it as I race. That's how we set up the AI system. It's actually very easy to do. I was pleasantly surprised when I went through and did that for the first time. So I feel like having two cars might not be enough to show this. Why don't we go ahead and add a few more? Let me see if I can do it this way. In the car prefabs, I've got my AI car. What if we just drug out two of these? Would that work? We will point them in the right direction to begin with. I don't want to have any, any weird issues there. And then what we'll do is we'll just give this uh, an honest race. Yeah, so since I made it a prefab, they they just come ready to go. And then I believe if I really wanted to, I could go into the car, and I think it's in the sky car model, sky car body, I could change the material from green to whatever I wanted to. I've got a, a component in here with some materials from a free asset on the asset store with just some generic car materials in it. I can make this one blue if I wanted to. But I have a blue one. Oh, what if I do with this one? Yeah, that's kind of cool. So now it's a black one. So now I've got basically four different cars that I can see. Something I noticed when I added the AI car to the scene is that it doesn't have the waypoints selected in the progress tracker. So we're going to add the waypoints. That's very important or else it just drives in circles and we're going to override. We're going to apply all. things. So when you add the cars to your scene, you do have to set the waypoints for them. And if we look at it in scene view, we can see how the cars take off 